What's going on, everybody? RJ Ochoa here from SB Nations, blogging the boys.com. Hope all is well. Wherever you are, we hope you're happy, safe, healthy, and that you are enjoying the start to the month of May, one of the most boring months of the NFL calendar, if we're being honest. And that's what I do. I'm very honest with you all the time here on the Blogging the Boys YouTube channel. By the way, I want to say thank you and hello to those of you uh, who are new subscribers here to the Blogging the Boys YouTube channel. We have officially become the most subscribed to team channel across the SB Nation network. Uh, very exciting times, obviously, on the heels of the NFL draft. We have a lot to go, uh, a lot of time to go until training camp starts, which means we have a lot of things that we'll be able to discuss here on the YouTube channel. So uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. We have a lot of fun around here, and we're looking forward to continuing to have that same fun with you throughout the course of the offseason and, of course, the regular season. Today, we're here to discuss two um, important things, and they both weirdly involve Trey Lance in ways that actually don't involve him, but that's kind of the way that things ultimately tend to go. Let's go ahead and get into the first one. Uh, it broke on Wednesday. Let's see here. Today is Thursday, May the 2nd for me uh, as I put this video together. It broke on Wednesday, May the 1st, that the Cowboys were set to decline Trey Lance's fifth-year option. What is the fifth-year option? Maybe you don't have anything uh, or you don't know anything about this. In case you do not know, Every player in the NFL that is drafted in the first round, so let's use Tyler Guyton as an example, obviously, for the Cowboys because that just happened. Every rookie contract is four years long. Unless you're a first-round draft pick, you have a fifth-year option on that contract if you're a first-round draft pick that the team who holds your contractual rights after your third season can decide if they want to exercise. And if they do, you get a fifth-year option value, which is a significant bump in terms of salary for that fifth year. That fifth-year number is fully guaranteed. So Tyler Guyton is going to play his rookie season with the Cowboys in 2024. 2025, after the 2026 season, when he is getting set to enter his fourth year in the NFL, which would be 2027, the Cowboys will have to decide if they want to pick up Guyton's fifth-year option for the 2028 season. If they do, he's under contract through that year for them obviously this is a tool and a mechanism that generally works out for the teams obviously uh because it is an increase in value certainly but it is nowhere near market rate certainly for the money positions in the nfl the big time money positions trey lance is a quarterback so uh this involves him now he was drafted in 2021 by the san francisco 49ers so that's 21 22 23 just finished up so the cowboys who hold his contractual rights in the here and now had to decide entering year four, which is 24, obviously, whether or not they wanted to pick up that fifth-year option. And according to ESPN's Todd Archer, they declined to do so. Let's get this information back up on the screen for you. I wrote this article at blogontheboys.com. We'll put a link to it in the description down below. Uh, this is the blurb from ESPN. Unsurprisingly, the Dallas Cowboys will be uh, declined picking up the fifth-year option on quarterback Trey Lance. The decision was essentially made last August, and we'll explain this in a moment here, when the Cowboys acquired Lance from the Niners for a 2024 fourth-round draft pick. Had the Cowboys picked up the option, it would have cost $22.4 million. That is fully guaranteed. All right. This is kind of everything you need to know as it relates to Trey Lance. Let me take that off the screen for you here. So Dak Prescott, whenever he signs, whether it's with the Cowboys or somebody else, is probably going to make somewhere around $60 million per year. So when you think about the idea of a quarterback making $22.4 million for a single year, which would be next year for Trey Lance, that sounds pretty cheap, right? Well, the problem is, as it relates to Trey Lance, we, as in the general world, have no idea what he really is at the NFL level. The San Francisco 49ers obviously didn't totally know. That's why they moved on from Trey. The Dallas Cowboys traded for him at the very end of the preseason. Remember, it was like the night before the Cowboys played the final game of the preseason last year. Remember, that was the day that Dak Prescott served as the offensive play caller and Will Greer was playing and he helped him look really good and everybody was really upset because Greer had played really well throughout camp in the preseason and the Cowboys traded for Lance anyway. That feels like forever ago, I know. Uh, but because the Cowboys haven't really seen Trey Lance, it would have been really irresponsible and really reckless, honestly, to guarantee him $22.4 million in general, but let alone on the salary cap for next year, especially if they are able to bring Dak Prescott back at some value that is probably going to be somewhere close to $60 million, as mentioned. This is why the decision was effectively made. There was never going to be a world where the Cowboys were going to know beyond a shadow of a doubt in terms of good hypotheticals um, that they could pick up Trey Lance's fifth year option. The only way that we could have known would have been if there had been some sort of situation throughout this past season where Trey Lance had had to play and he had played tremendously well. 
And then the Cowboys were deciding to move on and wanted to pick up his fifth year option. But even then, they are contractually tied to Dak Prescott in the here and now. And Dak Prescott is on the books for next year, the 2025 season, at about $40 million. Wait, what's going on there? Yeah, in case you did not know, because of his contract, because of all the restructuring and all the sorts of things, whether or not Dak Prescott is playing for the Dallas Cowboys in 2025, he counts $40 million, I'm rounding here, against the salary cap. If the Cowboys had picked up Trey Lance's fifth-year option, that would have been $22.4 million more. So the Cowboys would have had $62.4 million, at least as of now, tied to the quarterback position alone on the 2025 salary cap, which is, again, why this was never going to be a thing. And you may be wondering, well, or you may be saying to yourself, this sounds pretty ridiculous. Why would the Cowboys have traded for Trey Lance? Did this just develop over time? No, no, no. This was known all along, which is why the trade was such a curious one from the very beginning. Um, I don't want to sit here and just drag the Cowboys, obviously. Um, you know, they felt the Trey Lance trade was something that made sense for them. Um, but we really have yet to see that pay off in any real tangible way. Uh, but nevertheless, um, Trey Lance's fifth year option was officially declined. And that is newsworthy because if they had picked it up, and obviously this we now know this won't happen, but had they picked it up, it would have legitimately created a world and probably solidified the Cowboys moving on from Dak Prescott in 2025 for the reasons that we just listed. But uh, Trey Lance, in all likelihood, will be playing somewhere else in 2025 or playing for the Cowboys on a much, much cheaper deal. But as I've said many times throughout the course of this offseason, if you live in a world very quickly here where Trey Lance, if you're Trey Lance, and we get to next offseason and the Cowboys let Dak Prescott walk and the Cowboys come to you and the Cowboys say, hey, Trey, um, we would love for you to be our starting quarterback. Dak Prescott's gone. Let's talk deal. If you're Trey Lance, that twenty two point four million dollars, that is yesterday's price, because now that you have the leverage, now that you're the only option the Cowboys have, you want something more than twenty two point four million dollars, which, again, is partly why this decision to trade for Trey Lance never really made sense. But Water under the bridge. Um, I said there were two stories that we're going to get to today. That was number one. Number two does involve Trey Lance in a certain way. Now, if you have followed me in the past, whether it be on Twitter or my written work or here on our YouTube channel or in the podcast world, you know that I love things like jersey numbers. I love things like numbers in general. I also have said uh, for about a year now that if and when Zeke Elliott would ever return to the Cowboys, that he would definitely wear number 15 because there would be no way the Cowboys wouldn't tap into the ability uh, to sell more merchandise around Zeke. New merchandise, obviously, because he wore 21 for the first version of his career with the team. And that was always said somewhat tongue in cheek, but definitely with a layer of seriousness baked in. Obviously, this week, the Cowboys brought Zeke back. We had a video as soon as that became uh, official in terms of reports. You can go watch that here on our channel. As I mentioned, if you if you, you, know, if you subscribe, you get access to all those things. That would be kind of cool if you did that. Um, and it initially looked like Zeke was going to pick up 21, pick that back up and, and kind of act like, you know, it was just a one-year sort of sabbatical thing. Um, that changed. On Wednesday, it was reported that Zeke Gallia would actually not be wearing number 21 in 2024 with the Cowboys, that he would instead be reverting to the number that he not only wore with the New England Patriots, but more notably wore at The Ohio State University, number 15. Now, something that I have found to be an important detail here, and again, I nerd out when it comes to this kind of stuff, the first tweet that Zeke Elliott had after the Cowboys released him a year and change ago was, I need to get my 15 back. He was obviously talking about wearing number 15. In case you did not know, while today it is commonplace for skill position players to wear numbers like 15 or 10 or even single digit numbers. I hate this, by the way. I wish we lived in older times um, where 21 was kind of a classic running back number. But hey, maybe I'm just get off my lawn guy. Either way, nowadays it's really popular for players that play the position that Zeke does, the running back position, to wear numbers like that. But that was not allowed. Maybe you're a newer NFL fan or maybe you didn't know that. At the time, Zeke Elliott could not wear 15, the time being when he was drafted by the Cowboys eight years ago in 2016. So when the Cowboys cut him last year, he obviously was in a position where he was going to be experiencing something new. He wanted to wear number 15. He did with the Patriots and now he can with the Cowboys, so he will. Problem is that Trey Lance was number 15. So um, on the same day that it came out that the Cowboys were declining Trey Lance's fifth year option, the Cowboys also ripped the 15 off of Trey Lance and put him in number 19, which is a sneaky good number for a quarterback. I saw a lot of people saying how it was a, a bad number for a QB, but I like it personally. Shout out to Johnny Yu, of course. I have one of his books here, or a book about him uh, on my bookshelf. But nevertheless, 
Trey Lance now at 19, which frees 15 up, which means that Zeke Elliott is going to be wearing number 15. Why are you telling me this, RJ? I'm telling you this because as much fun as I find this subject to be, there are some people who went a little bit too far. Uh, a lot of people, I saw a lot of tweets, got a lot of comments, a lot of messages on Instagram saying, does this mean Stefan Gilmore's coming back? Stefan obviously wore 21 this past year when Zeke Elliott was in New England. Well, here's the thing. I doubt it. Um, in fact, I would assume that it's not going to happen. There was a note from uh, the Dallas Morning News is Michael Gelkin. I'll zoom in on this for you here. There is nothing imminent on a potential return for cornerback Stephon Gilmore. A person familiar with the situation said Gilmore wore number 21 for the Cowboys in 2023. As you can see, Gelkin is quoting his own tweet where he notes, obviously, uh, that Zeke Elliott is changing jersey numbers. But a lot of people were speculating and wondering, well, Zeke is clearly you know, changing from 21 to 15 so they can let Stephon Gilmore back. Again, I would love for that to be true, especially because I love stories like that and I love details like that. But I never thought this. Um, I don't know if you did, but if you did, I'm glad we could kind of clear things up. I will say, though, that even though this doesn't necessarily mean that the Cowboys are bringing Stefan Gilmar back and Michael Gelkin helped clear that up for us, they should consider bringing Stefan Gilmar back. The fact that Stefan Gilmore is still available and can still be had on the open market by any NFL team is crazy to me. He struggled a little bit in the early parts of last season for the Cowboys when Trayvon Diggs was initially injured. And we talked about that a lot here on the channel and all throughout the blog and the boys universe. Remember, the Cowboys traded for Stefan Gilmore to kind of be their secondary corner, uh, their CB2, if you will, with Trayvon Diggs obviously serving as their kind of star at the position. But Trayvon Diggs got hurt. Uh, right after week two, and that thrusted Stefan Gilmore into an entirely different role. That also opened the door for Deron Bland. Uh, but the Cowboys may believe a little bit, I don't want to say too much, but they might. They may just be ready to believe all the way in Deron Bland, which makes sense um, given what we saw from him throughout 2023. And as of now, Trayvon Diggs, Deron Bland, your outside corners, Jordan Lewis working the slot. A year ago, it was thought that Trayvon and Stefan would be your outside players with Duran manning the slot. Remember, Duran also led the team in interceptions his rookie season in 2022. So there was a lot to believe in, of course. You know, nobody could have foreseen what we saw this past year with him setting the pick six record and all that stuff. But uh, the Cowboys did bring back Jordan Lewis. So those are your kind of starting three. They did draft Kalen Carson in the fifth round this year. They also have Eric Scott Jr., who they traded up the draft last year. They have Nashawn Wright. Um, those aren't really viable options for me, which is why, again, I would love it if they would consider bringing back Stephon Gilmore, but we will see. Nevertheless, Trey Lance kind of serving as the middle, you know, kind of the Venn diagram middle of two weird stories involving the team this week. What with uh, his fifth year option being declined, that really surrounding him and then his number being taken away and given to Zeke and opening the door of possibility for 21 to being handed to Stephon Gilmore. Um, you got to love the offseason and the weird, wacky things that it can kind of bring to you. So, uh, But that's what we like to talk about here on the Blog and the Boys YouTube channel. If you're newer around here, I know a lot of you subscribed as a result of the NFL draft due to the videos we had. If you did, I promise to earn your subscription, to continue to earn your subscription, uh, because we love to talk about the Dallas Cowboys. I love to talk about the Dallas Cowboys. You can expect Dallas Cowboys content from us 24-7, 365, um, breaking news, whatever the case may be. Obviously, it's a different time of year with it being the offseason, but we have a lot of things to discuss, as mentioned. So that's what we're doing right now. So please consider subscribing if you haven't yet here to the Blog on the Boys YouTube channel. Like the video, obviously. My name is RJ Cho. If you think I'm cool, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or Threads at RJ Ochoa or on TikTok at rj.ochoa. If you'd like to send me an email, you can do so rj.ochoa at sbnation.com or you can leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to get to those also. For now, I'm going to bid you adieu. I'm going to hope that you have a wonderful day. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. This weekend, wish me luck, I'm going to build the swing set that we ordered from my son. So I am very anxious to see how that goes. Going to smoke a pulled pork in parallel with it all. So I got a lot of balls in the air uh, this weekend uh, around the Ochoa household. So uh, wish me luck. But thank you so much, everybody, for hanging out. And uh, we'll see you next time.